Her triumphs, I took a group of women that didn't believe in themselves, and I just believed in them. Her trials. I never wanted to go to practice. I was losing a ton of weight. Her story. I just put my faith in God and just trusted the system. Her why. I want people to see what I did and say, oh, that's so awesome. I'm going to be better than that. That would be how I hope that this journey ends. This is Her Why, where we tell the stories from BYU women's sports. Here is your host, Lauren McLean. We are so glad you've joined us for Her Why, where we celebrate the women who make BYU sports great. Today's guest is Avery Pope, a junior on the women's tennis team and daughter of BYU men's basketball head coach Mark Pope and her mother, Leanne Pope. Thanks so much for coming on with me, Avery. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Well, we're excited to have you here. Your parents are are definitely two recognized faces in the BYU community, but what we want to know is who is Avery Pope, the athlete and the person? How would you describe yourself? Well, first I would say that a huge part of who I am is my parents. Mm. They've had a huge influence on me. Um, I think a lot of the time people wonder if I try and get away from that a little bit, kind of them being a little bit more of a public figure, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I mean, my dad, to a lot of people, he's a coach, he's a mentor, but I'm there's only four people in the world that get to call him their dad, and mm. I get to be one of them. So I'm super proud of that. But if I were to describe myself, I would say that I'm very stubborn. <laughs> I would say I, I try to work really hard. Um, I love tennis. I'm an English major. Okay. I recently decided to switch to English. I'm thinking about law school. So you say you're stubborn. What what ties into that? Because I feel like I feel like people can be stubborn in different ways. Are you stubborn when it comes to athletics, where you're like, I'm going to keep working and working and working until I get this? Or are you stubborn where like you want it your way all the time? I'm stub <laughs> I'm stubborn in athletics in the sense that I'm very resilient, but I would say I'm more stubborn off the court. Okay, probably. I love it. Yes. I love that. And you you know what? You have to be a little bit right. You got to be able <laughs> yes. to stand your ground. You're in your third year at BYU. What's it like being on the women's tennis team? I love our team. We have a, well, the first thing that I think when you talk about my team is my coaches. We're blessed with an amazing coaching staff. Holly Hassler, Gabby Curtis, and then um, Coach Porter. He was the old men's coach. He's not with us this year because he's fighting some health problems. But those three coaches have had such an impact on my personal experience and our whole team. Um, and then the second thing that I think of is my teammates. We have a super diverse team. Uh, we have a girl from Hong Kong, uh, China, Taiwan, and India. Wow. And they just add so much to our team. And I think the diversity that we have on our team um, has such a big impact. My best friend is Bobo. We room together our freshman year, and she's from China. And... We we just became best friends over the years. We've lived together all three years that we've been here. And she's become a huge part of my family. And I just think, like, when I think about what makes our team special, I think about that and that BYU tennis brought Bobo into my life. And she's one of the most important people to me. Oh, my gosh. I love that so much. Have you learned a lot about the Chinese culture from her? I'm trying to. She actually got to go home this summer. She hadn't been home at all, and this summer was the first time she got to go home. And so I got to connect with her mom a little bit while she was there. I got to call them and have them both on FaceTime, and that was super fun. So her mom speaks English. Her mom does not speak English. Bobo was a translator. Really? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Have you picked up on any Chinese phrases from her? (laughs) I actually, I was trying to, I I decided I wanted to learn a language last year, at least take like a beginner beginner course. Yeah. And I told Bobo, I was like, I thought, I think I should learn Chinese. Like, you speak, you could help me. She's like, there's no way you're going to be (laughs) able to learn Chinese. don't even try. So I went with Spanish. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the complete, probably a good call though. I love that so much. And you mentioned your coach as well. We interviewed uh, Coach Holly Hassler last year when she, and she mentioned that you were a very, very hard worker. What does that mean to hear that coming from your coach? Um, it means a lot. Work is something that we've talked a lot about in my family. Um, and The idea that my coach thinks I work hard. I feel like that's one thing that I have control over. And it's something that I that I I try to give my all to the team and to my coaches. And so it means a lot. 
And she obviously has just some incredible experience as a former pro tennis player. We've heard some of her awesome stories. How do you feel like she's impacted the program, just being the person she is, and then, then also bringing in that experience? I mean, Holly is tough, and she's kind, and she's feisty, and she's fair. And she doesn't ask us to do anything that she wasn't willing to do or that she didn't do at the highest level of tennis. And she's she's found a really great balance of being our leader and our, our coach, but also a friend. And she's also a mother. Like, she's, she's really let us be a part of her family. And being a coach's daughter, I know how many sacrifices that coaches' families make so that they can share Holly with us and and I think she's just she's taught us a lot on the court and off the court we just went on a team camping retreat and both Gabby's husband and Holly's husband came and they helped the whole thing (laughs) get put together and so so that's something really special about my coaches what do you feel like is the impact of having a a female coach I mean it just I can only imagine you can relate a little more to a female coach, but specifically Holly, what does it mean to, to have a female head coach? Um, I feel like she just understands us in a different way that maybe a male coach wouldn't. Um, she understands that we give everything that we have when we're on the court and that also that there's a lot of things that are important off the court. And that's something that she's taught me. Uh, I think sometimes uh, me and all athletes, it's really easy to get wrapped up where your whole life feels like it's tennis. And it actually doesn't allow you to perform as well as you mm-hmm. would like to. And I think that's something that she's she's taught me is just that there's a lot of other more important things besides tennis. I love it. Let's start from the beginning with you. You have three sisters. You're the second oldest. Right? Yes. You all play sports. Obviously, your dad played pro basketball and now coaches. Your mom comes from a family of athletes and coaches. What was it like growing up in the Pope household? Um, We just tried everything when we were little. We tried every sport. I mean, I've played basketball, soccer, softball, volleyball. Like, I, <laughs> I swear everything that there is to play. And then, and not even just sports, but art classes and science mm-hmm. classes and and I think we've all gravitated towards sports, but different ones. I don't really know why that is, but um, I can say that we learned a lot from each other. I learned a lot from watching my older sister, Ella, navigate through her basketball career. She just graduated from Ohio University playing basketball. Mm-hmm. And then my younger sister, Layla, she's dancing for the jazz NBA team. Wow. And I learned a lot from her, even though she's younger than me. And my baby sister, Shay, she's playing volleyball at Timpview. And I, I think it's really fun for us to all support each other and, and learn from each other's journey. That's so cool. I love that you were able to try out so many things when you guys were little. Is that something that your parents implemented, like it was important to them just to let you explore? Did they or did they put you in everything or were you guys like, I want to try dance and art and this and this? Like, what was that like? I think it more came from us. Like my younger sister, Layla, she always wanted to dance. And so my mom threw in a dance class and she loved it. But we kind of just wanted to try everything. Yeah. I think we grew up just learning, like, we want to find something we love and we want to work at it. And so when we were younger, it was just about finding something that we loved. So cool. I love that you all gravitated eventually towards sports. Yeah, it's Some fun. sort of sport. Who's the most competitive in your family? I think we're all a different type of competitive. <laughs> I mean, I would say me, but I don't know if I'm biased. But... But I would say I'm probably the most um, disciplined. Okay. I would say my older sister is definitely the most feisty. <laughs> and I would say my little sister, Layla, is the best at enjoying um, okay. enjoying competing, enjoying um, her sport. So you're all competitive just in your own ways. Yes. Did you and your sisters fight a lot growing up or did you guys get along pretty well? I would say we got along pretty well. But the one thing that we fight over a ton is clothes. <laughs> if my sister takes my shirt or I take her shirt, that is the one thing that we lose our minds That's over. That's a no-no. But besides that, I, f- I feel like we always got along. That's pretty amazing with four sisters. I come from a family of seven with six girls. Oh, wow. And we fought. So wow. I'm proud of you guys. 
<laughs> What's your favorite thing that your your family does together? I love the unique the unique dynamic that you have. You have your dad and then five women. So yes. what's one of your favorite things that your family does together? Um, well, my dad's definitely a girl dad, like a hundred percent. I feel like most of our time is spent supporting each other. So we're either at my dad's games or Shay's volleyball games or my tennis matches. But if we're not doing that, it's just being together. Yeah. We don't really care what we're doing. We just want to be together. We oh. love Disneyland. because, <laughs> And the best part about Disneyland is waiting in lines because we just get to talk the whole time and play games and I just being together. Does your dad fit on the rides? <sighs> I don't know how he makes it work. The only one, though, that he cannot go on is Space Mountain. Because he's too tall. He, his legs are, like, too high that the bar won't, <laughs> the bar won't close over his legs. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, I love that. So I love that you played a lot of sports growing up. What made you eventually gravitate towards tennis specifically? Tennis is kind of the last sport that I really tried. Um, I mean, I think when I was when I was younger, I was very kind and I didn't want to hurt anybody and I wanted everybody to have a turn with the ball so I didn't really love basketball <laughs> yeah. or soccer um, and I loved being told every single little thing to do tennis is very technical mm -hmm. and so I liked that I was told every single little step and and I I don't know I think that's kind of why I fell in love with it at a young age and and I've just loved it more and more as I've gotten older was it something that came pretty naturally for you, or did you have to work really hard to get to the level that you're at? Um, I would say I started tennis pretty late. I started when I was like 10, 11, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound late to start right. a sport. But a lot of my teammates or other people at this level probably started when they were like five. Um, and so I think I, had a, I always had to kind of play catch up. Um, but... But I also think I have a lot. I've been really blessed in my life with the opportunities and the people and the coaches that I've had throughout my life. And so I would say both. Your older sister, you mentioned, played basketball. So that was kind of her sport, which is like, I mean, looking from the outside and you're like, well, duh, basketball, you know, that's what she's going to choose. Were your parents surprised when you chose tennis as the second no. oldest? No. Okay. I mean, if I, I think more often my parents were trying to not trying but encouraging us to try things that weren't sports mm. my dad always said he's like I'm not going to be the person that makes you guys great you guys are and so it was really important to him that everything that we we did with our sport came from us my dad was never trying to get us to go out to the court or get us to do extra practicing he really wanted it to come from us and I think it's the greatest gift that my parents gave me is that they let me figure that out on my own and sometimes I felt like I was a little behind because of it but I think overall it's gotten me to where I am and it's taught me how to work and it's taught me how to how to grow and maybe a reason you still love the sport till this I day, would agree right? with that before coming to BYU, you won the Utah High School Team State Championship three years in a row, and you were ranked number three in Utah, which is awesome, number 10 in the Mountain Region. How do you feel like you were able to achieve that in your high school career? Um, in high school, I was always kind of playing catch-up with some of these higher-level junior players. And there was a point, I think it was my junior year, where I just decided that I was going to ask everybody and anybody to play practice matches. And a lot of people don't do that because it's kind of hard to get people who are way better than you to want to yeah. come play with you. And it's also really scary to ask to be a junior in high school, asking like a 10 year old boy to go play. <laughs> and I just would be on the court and play practice matches against my friends, parents, girls wow. who were way better than me, girls who were way worse than me. And in a lot of ways, I was a pest. Like, I would just blow up your phone until you just <laughs> couldn't say no to me anymore. <laughs> but I feel like that's really what, what helped me a lot in juniors to, to grow my game. That's where your stubbornness comes in. Right? That's where You're my like, stubbornness. You will practice with me or I will keep bugging you. I love it. Do you, do you prefer doubles or singles? I would normally say singles. But this summer, I've had a lot of success in doubles, and it's become really fun. Okay. So I, I really like both. You've grown to love doubles a little bit more than before. Yes. What was the process like of choosing a school to play for at the next level? Were you recruited by other schools besides BYU? What was that process like? So, I mean, in a lot of ways, I would say I was recruiting schools more than they were recruiting me. Um, 
I was actually set to go to Dixie State. It's now called Utah Tech. Yeah. And I was super excited about it. It felt right. I just knew that I wanted to play tennis and I didn't care where that was, whether it was a D3 school in Wyoming or yeah. a really big school. Um, I was set on going to Dixie. I was super excited about it. It felt right. And then super late into the summer, right before my freshman year, Holly called me and asked me to join the team. And I was a little, I was a little nervous because I felt like it was such a big opportunity and I had been fighting to get opportunities like that. Um, but Dixie had just felt so right. Mm. And then when I met with Holly, it was actually a really special moment where it just, I was in the meeting and we were talking and I just committed right on the spot. Wow. And I did, that is not like me. I think through things, I'm not impulsive, but it just felt really right in that, in that meeting. And I'm so excited that I'm here. Would you say that was something about Holly that just struck you and resonated with you in that moment? I think it's Holly. I also think it might have been like a little bit of Heavenly Father um, just telling me that it was right. But I just feel like BYU wanted me for the reasons that I that I wanted to be wanted. They wanted me because I work hard and because they saw potential. Um, and I wanted to be somewhere where I felt like that's where I felt like the the things that I know that I'm capable of and that I can do every single day is what is the reason why they wanted me. So cool. What were your parents' reactions when you told them you were you decided to come to BYU? Well, the whole time they had tried to be really hands off, but my dad was so excited. <laughs> he was so excited and my mom was so excited that I was just gonna be right here. Oh my gosh, I love that. I bet he was. When your dad, let's talk about that a little bit. When your dad accepted the head coaching position at BYU, your family moved from UVU to BYU. That's not like a big move. But what was that unique transition like for your entire family? I say the the fan base is a lot bigger here and people care a lot more. But I feel like our role as a family has always been the same. Like we just support each other and we love each other and we feel safe with each other. And um, I feel like coming to BYU was really exciting and it was a, an adjustment for our family. But I, I really feel like our, our role didn't really change in, in that shift. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna have more from Avery Pope. This is Her Why. Welcome back to Her Why. I'm Lauren McLean, and I'm continuing my conversation with Avery Pope. Avery, what's one of your most memorable moments related to your dad's role as a basketball coach? Because he's kind of been all over the place. You've seen him do a lot of different things. Do you have a, a moment or a memory that sticks out to you? Oof. I mean, there's so many. If I had to pick <laughs> one, the first one that comes to mind is it was senior night, and we were playing Gonzaga. I think Gonzaga was ranked two in mm -hmm, the nation. Mm -hmm. And we beat them at home, and it was just such a magical moment. And the part that I remember is after the win, all the fans um, rushed the court, and and my dad um, found me and my family. And it was just a moment that we all got to share together. But the part that I feel like means a lot to me is my dad just always makes me, my sisters, and my mom a part of it. Mm. When he's talking about the team or like a win, he always says like, we won. Like ever since I was little, I would go to school and be like, we won last night, you know? <laughs> and I just think that's something that that's unique about my dad's job, that we get to be so involved in a part of it, but, but he's also always um, made us a part of it. You go have such a unique perspective that us regular fans do not. Obviously, we watch a game. We're watching for specific things, wins and losses. What's it like for you and your family when you're sitting in the stands while your dad's the head coach watching game? What's going through your mind? <laughs> I mean, we live and die with every play. <laughs> um, we just love, I mean, there's a really special BYU basketball family here. And we love everyone involved, and so we're really just cheering for everybody. Like everybody else is watching the star point guard, and they're yeah. kind of just hoping he has a big night so BYU wins. Yeah. But our family just knows everything that he's had to overcome to mm. be there tonight and how much it means in the bigger picture. And so I think when we're watching, that's what we're thinking of. Right. And we just love our dad. <laughs> and we sure. always got his back, and we want him to be successful. How cool for for that player or those players to have people like you guys as well that kind of know the backstory, know, you know, know what's really going on and, and kind of have a family of their own. I love that. 
I love that you said you make time to see each other compete in your your various sports. That's something you love to do together. How do you make time? That's the real question with you guys. Your sister at Ohio, you're at BYU, you're your sister dancing for the jazz, and then your younger sister playing volleyball, and your dad coaching. How do you guys make time for all of that? I mean, it changes as we've gotten older and as we've all kind of um, moved and our life's changed a little bit. My older sister, while she's in Ohio, she can't be at the games, but she always watches them on TV. My mom is for sure the glue of the family. That's probably what my answer would be. My mom, um, she is always texting us individually, updating us on how each other is doing in our in our lives on and off the court. And she's the one who really um, allows us to be connected to each other and also allows us to be connected to our dad. I mean, our because of my dad's job, uh, our family has to make a lot of sacrifices where he can't be there for a lot of my matches and my mom was at every single one. And then there will be that one match where my dad gets to come mm. and it's all about my dad being there and my mom always lets my dad be the hero. Oh, it's well. never about her, it's always about letting my dad be the hero for us. And I think that's something that I'm really grateful for for my mom because she could be um, a little against that or a little offended by that, but but she never is. Mm. She sounds incredible. She is. You mentioned that your freshman year you tore your ab. Yes. Which, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, how, wait, first of all, how did you do that? From serving. I don't know how long I'd been tearing it man um but i'd been having pain for a couple years and then it just got to the point where it was super frequent and we had been trying to do different rehab things then finally we went in and got an ultrasound and i had a four and a half centimeter tear in my ab which i didn't know that 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 was very big but apparently that's very very big Wow. and so i was out for probably five months i had to do get a bunch of injections prp injections and the hardest part were i had i couldn't do any physical activity whatsoever So, like, I could walk to class, but I couldn't even really go on a walk if I wanted to because it's so hard to isolate your ab. And so that was hard. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. Yeah. How did your family support you through that time? Um, Honestly, I don't think any of us really knew how it was going to go or how to support me because tennis had had become everything to me. It was my identity. It's what I thought about. It's what I did with my time. And the idea that that was going to be taken out of my life, but also just physical activity mm. in general was really scary. Um, and I would just say my family just supported me. Uh, I mean, it ended up being a really special experience for me. Uh, the BYU Athletic Department really took care of me. I did an internship with Whitney Johnson, one of the associate athletic directors, and I was basically like her personal assistant cool. and got to be involved in going to elementary schools and doing assemblies with other student athletes and helping with all the student athlete um, parties and organizing things like that. And I got to learn a lot. But I would just say my family's role in me tearing my ab is they just would check in with me every day, would um, listen to me when I when I would cry or need to talk things out. They were just always there. Because I'm sure in your roommate is Boba. Was, was she your yes. roommate at the time as well? Yes. What was that like for you watching her go to practice day in and day out? And you're like, I just have to sit here. Was that difficult for you? It's hard. Um, I think when you're injured, you do not want to go to practice. That's like the last thing you want to do. Um, But I'm really grateful to my team and to my coaches that they still expected me to come to practice. They still expected me to come to team events. Um, It really helped me still stay involved and feel connected. And my team, like we have a really special team. The girls are just really kind. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it it would take all day if I listed all the little things that all the texts and the things that girls dropped off at my apartment and not just right when I got hurt, but throughout the whole six months. I mean, they, my team really made me feel a part of it when I did not feel like I should feel part of it. How incredible is that and unique? Yes, I, really. I really love that. I'm sure your family of mostly girls, you're really tight knit. You you mentioned your older sister uh, played basketball at Ohio, but she recently got married. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So you had to add another boy to your family. Yes. How, how's that been? He, so Spencer Hart is his name. Okay. And he's amazing. <laughs> and I think my favorite part about Spencer 
is how happy he makes my sister. Mm. I don't know if I've ever seen my sister so happy and and to to have somebody who I mean, my older sister Ella is one of the most important people to me. She's been a huge example to me. And to have somebody who I feel like compliments her so well and loves her, it's just we love him. And oh, honestly, we haven't gotten to spend much time with him because they were in Ohio yeah. since they've been married, but they just moved back to Utah. And so we've gotten to have our first couple family dinners, and it's been really fun. Oh, I love that so much. What was that like having an older sister who went through an athletic journey first before you? What was that like She for you? taught me everything. I mean, a hu- my dad's example, my mom's example, and Ella's example was huge in me navigating through my tennis journey. Um, My sister is the one who taught me what to care about and what not to care about. Like she would miss a lot of parties and fun things in high school to go spend extra time in the gym. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had to decide on my own that that's something that I wanted to do. But seeing her do it just kind of um, helped me realize that that's what you do when you want to get better like getting up early like to go practice like if you want to get better you're willing to do the things that you don't want to do to to grow and I think that's something that she taught me just from watching her you mentioned that your parents didn't necessarily push you to go practice and to go to the gym more did your sister do that no okay there was one moment where I was at home and it was snowing outside, and it's really hard to find indoor courts in Utah just because mm-hmm. there's not a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> but I was kind of moping around because I was like, oh, I can't hit today. Like, it's snowing outside, and there's no indoor courts. And my sister was like, she she had heard me complain enough that day, and she was like, just get in the car. Put on tennis shoes and get in the car. So we went to the court, and she shoveled the whole court with me. It's the only time she's ever done something like that. But it was a huge moment for me where I just kind of learned, like, there's no excuses. Like, if you want to get better, you can find ways to get better. And sometimes it's not about having the or knowing how to have the greatest practice or the most efficient practice. But it's just about showing up and just, like, putting putting forth the effort. The power of older siblings, right? Yes. yes. Pretty incredible. You guys are all so busy. What's it like when you all get back together? Is it complete chaos or what's it, what's it like? It is it is chaos. We <laughs> t- we are all talking over each other. I feel like there's not enough time to like talk about everything we want to talk about, especially as we've all started moving out of the house. Um, and then occasionally there will be tears and then laughter and I feel like we go through all the emotions through one Sunday dinner. <laughs> but we just have so much fun together. Oh, I love that so much. Have you ever thought about coaching being in your future? No. I love tennis, and it's hard to think about the time that tennis is actually going to end, which it will. Um, I think that I've learned that there's so many other things in my life that I love, and I've never really thought about coaching, but I think my dad would say the same thing. Mm -hmm. When he was in college, he never thought about coaching. And he, I mean, he did so many things. He was also an English major. He did med school at Columbia. At one point he was studying, thinking about law school. So I, I don't know, maybe it is in my future, but right now that that is not something that I would say. Right now it's law school. Yes, right right now it's probably law school. We'll see. But What are your goals? So you're about to enter, uh, fall tennis season. What are your goals for this season? I think I've had the summer to kind of um, play my own tennis and play my own tournaments and it's been a lot about me and now it's a time where where I get to focus on how I can be a great teammate and how what my coaches need for me and and I know that focusing on that also helps my game a lot. I'm here with Avery Pope, a junior on the women's tennis team and daughter of UAU men's basketball head coach Mark Pope and her mother Leanne Pope. Avery, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time. You have an incredible story, and I can't wait to see what you do in your future. Thank you so much for having me. You can download and listen to all episodes of Her Why on the BYU Radio app or wherever you find podcasts. Her Why is a production of BYU Radio.